Good day and welcome to another Vaisla Q&A video. Today's video are questions we didn't get a chance to answer on our webinar, Continuous Mapping, Better Data, Better Compliance. We were very grateful to have over 200 people attend that webinar, but unfortunately we couldn't get to all the questions. So today I'm joined by our senior regulatory expert, Paul Daniel. Welcome, Paul, how are you? I'm good, Janice, happy to be here. Great, we're gonna go right into the questions that we received that we couldn't get to during the webinar on warehouse temperature validation, Okay, first question, what is the proper duration of a warehouse mapping? And is there any guidance or regulation that tells us how long our mapping should be? To my knowledge, there is no formal time limit provided by our regulators uh, regarding the duration of any temperature mapping studies, whether we're mapping refrigerators or warehouses. We don't want the mapping to be too short, or we won't capture a representative sample of conditions, and we need to see at least one full operational cycle, which could be defined as a day or a week, depending on the environment. We also don't want that mapping to be too long, because then we're just wasting time and money to capture data that's just redundant. I've typically used a 72-hour duration for chambers, uh, things like refrigerators, freezers, and incubators, and I, I support a 48-hour duration, which is what I recommend to our customers. Those are chambers. Now, for a warehouse, I recommend a week as the absolute minimum, and in some cases, two weeks might be appropriate. In our latest webinar that Janice mentioned, uh, continuous mapping in warehouses, we used seven days as our target mapping period for the warehouse. The easiest reference to support a seven-day warehouse mapping period is probably the one from the WHO, um, Temperature Mapping of Storage Areas. I think it's Annex 9. And in there, they say to map warehouses for a minimum of seven to 10 consecutive days, right? That's for warehouses and other ambient storage areas. For a chamber, I would refer to the ISPE Good Practice Guide uh, for a controlled temperature chamber mapping and monitoring. Now in that guide, it says mapping should be no less than 24 hours. This means 24 hours is the absolute minimum for a chamber, and the duration should be increased based on a risk analysis for more confidence. That's why I use 72 hours. It's easier to map for an extra two days than it is to write up a risk assessment. And you can do a 72 hour mapping over a weekend without losing any weekday time. So 72 hours for a, uh, a chamber, seven days for a warehouse. Okay, great. And um, also you have done a webinar in the past. Uh, it's available on our website. It's called Risk Assessments for GXP Environments. And that could be very helpful to people who are looking uh, how to do risk assessments. But let's move on to our second question. So I understand that I may need to repeat the temperature mapping of my warehouse after major changes or reconfigurations. How much reconfiguration would require a remapping? Oh, that's a question that doesn't have an easy answer. But as a simple rule of thumb, I think a reconfiguration is only significant enough to consider remapping if it requires a change control. But that's really only a useful distinction if your quality program is sophisticated enough that you have a change control procedure that covers your warehouse. This would probably be the case for a drug manufacturer, but maybe not for a distributor. So we probably need to dive in just a little more to help you out here. If you're moving product or just storing it in a different part of the warehouse, it probably won't count as a change that needs a change control, as long as the new part of the warehouse is uh, monitored and has had a temperature mapping performed. But if I was moving my racks, uh, changing the location, their height, or their orientation, this gets into the territory where I would be expecting a change control to evaluate if that change was really serious enough to require remapping. So that's where I would draw the line. If a structure like your warehouse racking needs to be bolted or unbolted to affect that change, and that reconfiguration needs a change control at a minimum. And part of that change process is evaluating if a remapping is needed. Generally, I say a remapping is needed if it affects airflow. I mean, imagine if we change the orientation of a warehouse rack, we may have effectively created a big wall out of cardboard boxes and pallets that will completely change how airflow moves through the space. And that will affect how temperature moves through the space. Things, things like this are what we need to be thinking about uh, to trigger a remapping. And don't forget that it might not just be physical changes. 
you want to change the controller set point on your HVAC system so you can save some energy, that probably is going to require a remapping. Okay, great. So our third question, which guidance tells us when to remap a warehouse? You say three years for warehouses, why? Okay, uh, if we look back in that ISP good practice guide that we mentioned before, the one for controlled temperature chambers, we'll start there. It says to use a risk assessment to determine remapping frequency and to pay attention to local regulatory expecta expectations. Um, that's almost so general that it's not really helpful here. But if we go later in the guide, there's another place where they give us some numbers. They say typical GXP practice is a remap every three to five years with critical storage getting remapped every year. I interpret things, uh, like critical storage, to be places like stability chambers. So we clearly aren't expected to remap every year for a warehouse. Um, three years just seems like a good place to start. Another good guidance uh, comes from the UK in their guidance on wholesale distribution practice, which says mapping should be repeated every two or three years for a warehouse. So here's another guidance giving us that three year mark as a good target for warehouse remapping. These are just guidances, right? They aren't regulations. The best that regulations seem to tell us is that qualifications, like a warehouse remapping, should be repeated as necessary. And that leaves it up to us to decide the frequency based on risk, which includes our knowledge of the system and the risk associated with that product being stored. Okay, great, thank you. It seems like we get a lot of questions from webinar participants asking for guidance or regulations. It seems that the industry guidance and actual experience in GXP is what's required for a lot of decision making here. Yeah, they want to know how often the remap or, or and the, the discrete advice, but they also want to know what regulation or guidance tells them to do it so that they make sure that they're following the rules, which isn't a bad place to start. Well, that's where having somebody with your experience can really help people. So. Again, thank you for doing that. And please, uh, if you didn't catch it, go over and check out our continuous mapping, better data, better compliance for warehouses. It's under webinars on our website. And thank you for joining us for this Q&A session. And we'll have another one. We still have several more questions to answer from that webinar. So thanks a lot, Paul, for taking the time today. My pleasure.